everyone and welcome to another podcast episode. My name is Lucy Challenger and I'm the CEO of Polo and Tweed and welcome to The Voice of Luxury where I am absolutely delighted to be joined by an inspiration, a dear friend but also an inspiration, Libby Shepherd. Libby, hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you love. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Now, Libby, for everyone listening in, is a body worker and intimacy coach. And she is the owner of Touch of Happiness, Happiness Massage and Massage School. Mm. So Libby, tell us about this incredible business you run. Tell us a little bit about your career up to now. And, and just to everyone listening in, Tell us who you are and what you do. Mm, okay, so I um, I would describe myself first and foremost, I'm a body worker, which means I touch people, I work with people's bodies. Um, I, I've trained in kind of various types of body work, various types of massage. I used to be a personal trainer. Um, I've trained in sports massage, Thai massage, um, lots of different things. Um, and I, I kind of, my main focus with my work is not so much about massage, which when you think of massage, it's more about just working with soft tissue and mm -hmm. maybe fixing injuries, um, and, and kind of working on the body on that, like just a physical level. Mm -hmm. Whereas what I do is, is more about blending the, the physical experience of the body and muscles, the, the bones, the, the kind of sensations that you can feel but also with the, the emotional aspect of, uh, of our, our wonderful experience as humans. So there's, it's a little bit kind of deeper, a little bit more alternative than just what you might think of when you talk about a normal massage. Um, so I, yeah, I, I got into this through kind of working as a personal trainer and sports masseuse initially. Um, and then I, I had a, a little introduction into the world of, of Tantra and spirituality and working with kind of sexual energy and how we, how we relate to our sexuality. And that sort of, that blend of knowing about the physical body and then knowing about the emotional and the spiritual aspect and the, the sexual aspect of, of the body. Um, was kind of like a, a, a perfect union for me. It was this really um, amazing opportunity to, to, to do something that I, I really enjoyed. So I've been doing this for about um, six, seven years now, um, uh, full time. Yeah, I set up my, my company, Touch of Happiness. Um, and so I work one to one with people. I work with couples who want to learn more about kind of touching, um, touching each other. So learning to give each other massage and things like that. Um, I run workshops for couples uh, and more recently because of, you know, COVID and everything. Um, I've been working a lot more uh, virtually with people. So doing virtual coaching. Uh, and last year I launched uh, my online courses, which are, are there to kind of pass on everything that I've learned in terms of intimate touch, um, sensual massage, working with the body in this, um, in this very kind of intimate way, that physical way and emotional way. So, wow, wow. I mean, it, it sounds like you've been on, on a lot of journey from first, like you mentioned, the personal training and then sports massage into where you are now. But you mm. mentioned the word tantric and mm. it's not something I'm particular, I mean, I've heard the words, but mm. I don't, it sort of brings stereotypical images into my mind. So for, for people listening in, I imagine a lot of them are also going to be like me, not fully understanding what it is. Mm. So, so what actually is it? Mm. So the, the, the way that I apply um, kind of tantric philosophy or uh, the tantric approach to life is, is very, very similar to mindfulness in, in the sense of just being present with what is happening right now. So what you can feel in your body, particularly, you know, my field of speciality is, is intimacy and, and sexuality. Mm -hmm. So particularly around those things, how can you be as present as possible with, with what you feel in your body right now, the experience that you're having right now, rather than what a lot of people have, you know, the kind of distractions in the mind when they're, when they're 
receiving a massage or when they're being intimate with a partner for example mm. so we're often so kind of busy in the head with you know this all the stories that we get about um about sexuality and about um, our bodies growing up that that kind of forms a, a very strong narrative that mm. then prevents you from actually just Oh, you know feeling enjoying um expressing uh and and being with with your body in that moment so i i mean i i kind of ap apply the the broader idea of tantra as a philosophy to the, to my work but there certainly is the understanding in the west which is very like we have that hook of it being something sexual and yeah. You know, Sting made it famous in the the nineties or whatever with his marathon sessions of, of tantric sex or whatever we we heard about then. Um, so I, I'm sh there is yeah, there's there's definitely like a um, a certain idea that people might have around that around that word. Um, but for me, it's it's it, it's kind of a a mindfulness approach yeah. that's specifically related to the physical body the emotional body and, and kind of intimacy and sex okay but from what you're saying the tantra mantra as it were isn't necessarily sexual it does it's more about awareness and perception and and being connected with yourself rather mm. than being distracted like you mentioned from exterior mm -hmm. am i right yeah 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 exactly and then the kind of the the, the broader um part of that which is how we can use that that sexual energy so there is this kind of connection to to sexual energy sure. um which i think a lot of people have one sort of level of uh, understanding mm. um that it's it's just kind of a goal oriented thing like um we approach our bodies and, and we touch our bodies and we touch other people's bodies with a goal in mind when it comes to sex mm. but the tantric approach is more about you know that's a that energy is like a fuel that you can use for your creativity for your life purpose you know if you're running a business it's it's energy that you can kind of transmute and and use in other areas of your life not just purely for that kind of um goal uh, mm. oriented connection mm. to sex. and I, I think that's interesting what you mentioned about that goal and also that kind of distraction because i think life is so busy all the time and mm. and you know once you leave your teenage three days of not having to worry about paying bills and you know the daily grind you become reasonably consumed with existence and daily practice and i think combine that with uh, pornography which is now fully accessible uh, to mm. everyone mm. um mm. we are constantly confronted by i guess sexual ideals what how we should be it, it, mm. with our partners and 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 how we should behave and and that end goal of you know the final moment as it were so mm. i mean you must you must see that a lot with your own work that that people are constantly bombarded by everything and and it, it must be incredibly difficult to switch that off or or become more in tune with yourself yeah yeah it's if any, anyone who's tried any kind of meditation or yoga or anything like that you you will know that it is it's super difficult to uh to focus your attention and to mm. let go of, of distraction and let go yeah. of busyness but i think you know touch um intimacy the physicality the kind of the experience of being intimate being body to body with with someone else being in contact with someone else whether that's that's sexual or sensual or or intimate in some way yeah. um is is a really like foundation core part of our experience as human beings and mm. um i think certainly what i see is that there's a huge amount of um confusion and misunderstanding and disconnection from that very uh natural state or, mm. or enjoyable part of life so mm. a lot of the a lot of the people that i work with i mean it's not all serious you know, um many people i work with have come to me because they have trauma they have um sexual abuse or um uh, abusive stuff in their in their history mm -hmm. um which you know makes it very difficult then to trust your body to feel safe when it comes to intimacy um yeah. maybe to to have a 
a, a nourishing and healthy experience of touch. Um, so there can be really big barriers to that for a lot of people. Mm. And then the, the, the other sort of aspect that, that, I, that I see of that where there isn't may, maybe major trauma is just the, the lack of education, the lack of information that people are given, the lack of support growing up around sexuality and, and bodies and, you know, that all that kind of stuff, like you say, that it's so pumped at us th through society, but we're also given this very um, damning or judgmental view of, of how, how we should approach sex or how we should approach intimacy. Yeah. So a just a huge amount of confusion and, and a huge amount of inability to feel anything in in the moment really to feel any kind of level of sensation or or, or pleasure or, or connection mm. um you know i would go as far as saying the the kind of the thing that's been highlighted through covid of there's a lack of touch in through lockdown like i was that's been part of my that's why i have a job you know mm. um the lack of touch in people's lives is huge and that even before this social lockdown stuff um you know we're we're we're, we're very confused as a as a species absolutely. I think around how to really handle that and how yeah. to be okay with it yeah no absolutely and I think I mean I'm I'm fascinated by the subject and I I think that our sexual taboos and hang-ups stem I believe, and I'm not a historian, but the Victorian and the belief of what is right and prim and proper fed mm -hmm. into that sort of sexual awareness. And mm -hmm. I find it staggering that in the modern day that women and men are not given autonomy and control and information for their mm -hmm. own bodies. You know, I, I remember a friend shared a while back on Facebook um, a, uh, a tampon advert that had been banned Mm. And the reason it was banned is because it, it, in a fun, really sort of pop educational way, explained how you should insert a tampon. Mm. And there was complete uproar. You know, people, this is disgusting. How dare they talk about, you know, how you should insert it. I'm thinking, but, but you know, half our population around yeah. the world, you know, need to know because if they don't use it properly, they will end up being uncomfortable. They could end up with infections. You know, there's a whole series of things. And this is just from menstrual health. This isn't mm. even getting into the sexuality conversation, you know? So if we're that hung up about mm. how women are allowed to talk about our bodies publicly, I mean, it's no wonder that a woman can get to 30 and not even be able to identify her own anatomy. I mean, I yeah. find that flabbergasting. Yeah, this is like it's it. It would it, it shocks me sometimes how how little people know about that. Just you know, like a part of like you know, I have an ear here, but I also have genitals here. But this is like a just a dark zone. Like there's nothing known here. We don't investigate this. We don't touch this we don't explore this we feel mm. very uncomfortable about this mm. so it yeah it is really strange and the I mean I, I'm curious about what country that tampon oh, it was, Ireland. In. It was Ireland. in Ireland so yeah, yeah there's a yeah. lot of so maybe a, a stronger aspect. yeah religious conditioning there yeah. um it's funny hearing because I'm in Stockholm right and they they have these and the tubes I don't know if they have them now but it was a, a an, an ad um like public advertising that ran that was these kind of art uh, installations like on the walls of the the tube stations yeah. and um it was these kind of black and white drawings of women um but like quite cartoony, but then they would have like some red with their, their menstrual blood like on their pants and they, their legs would be kind of like, they'd be on a trampoline or something. And and it's a very different um, culture okay. here in, in Sweden, I think mm. compared to, to Ireland. But even I was like, I, you know, can own my own shock going into the tube and being like, oh, um, oh, I wouldn't expect to see that on a tube station. like. <laughs> like yeah bleeding happens yeah, yeah. so <laughs> yeah. but the 
yeah the I think so there's the, the kind of public dialogue around what is um like how we talk about sex and how mm -hmm. we talk about intimacy mm -hmm. um and the you know there's a lot of stuff that's happened in the last few years in terms of um a heightened awareness of consent and what that means and you know how how is like okay to interact with people when it comes to touch and mm -hmm um with your intimate partner with with other people in the street with complete strangers etc mm -hmm. but there's also just the 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 kind of like sisterly or um more close relationship communication that like certainly i didn't get um a particularly open or non-judgmental dialogue growing up around this mm. stuff so i think mm. there's also this piece that's missing around how we how we educate and how we uh, model this kind of stuff for for our children as mm. well um, and I know like as a parent that will be something that um that that, that really interests you Absolutely. but yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I I sort of think back to my own childhood and you know my, uh, as you know my parents are doctors and they're European from you know backgrounds so i had a very liberal relaxed family mm. you know we'd talk about anatomy mainly medical you know terms but mm. it would all be very relaxed there was no sense of shame when it came to discussing our bodies if there was ever a concern i could bring it to my parents mm. but in comparison i would look at my peers and many of my friends growing up and they didn't have that relationship like you say with mm. with their parents where they felt comfortable or safe to ask these questions and i i look at my own son who of course as a woman i'm looking at it from a different gender perspective mm. but you know how can i help him learn about like you talk about consent mm. how can i teach him that it's okay to ask to explore to to feel good but in a safe way and i i, I imagine many of the people you you work with also struggle with that as adults yeah yeah totally and it's um you know my my kind of main I mean, I work, I've worked with people from like 18, 19, all the way up to 80, but um, my main kind of demographic, I would say, is kind of 35 to, to 60, predominantly male, um, um, but also maybe about 70% male, 20% female, and then the other 10% couples. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's, it's this kind of, uh, th this, this lack of confidence, this lack of um, uh, knowing how to enjoy or approach intimacy with maybe they've been in, you know, long term relationship, um, maybe they're single and they just have no physical contact um, or very limited physical contact or, mm -hmm. or, or touch. And it's, you know, knowing how to move past the shame that they are carrying around um, having desire, needing touch, needing connection, like there's just a huge blanket of shame about those things. And it, I mean, I love, I love, I love my work. I love what I do, but sometimes it is like, oh, yeah. you know, how, 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 how can I, how can I shift this for people? I, it, it's heartbreaking sometimes, like the, the amount of shame that has been put into people around their bodies around um around touch and connection and yeah just how soul destroying that is and i think that's something that's been really really highlighted in in the last year when it's all of a sudden like yeah. well we can't touch we're being forced not to and touch is now has this extra layer of shame because it could be literally dangerous yeah. you know yeah. it's it's very it, it crushes people and, and you see that, or I, I see that it's, it's very difficult, particularly for men, I think, and I only say that because I work predominantly with men, yeah. to be vulnerable about it as well, to be, yeah. to know how to be honest about it, to know how to, um, how to approach it without feeling judged or without feeling like they are a predator, you know, there's that, that yeah. whole kind of message to get to get through as well so it's a I mean it's a very confusing landscape but it is but you know but why have, I'm trying to do something but exactly. <laughs> you're, you're trying to to make an impact you're trying to make a change you know you're starting dialogues you're starting progressive 
change within people, even if it's just one, two, three, it adds up over time and, and you, make, you begin to make a difference. But, you know, if, if I was listening to this and thinking, you know, I, I need help or I need guidance, what makes you different to say a sexual therapist or counselor? Mm -hmm. What, why would I not just go and have a chat with someone about what I'm feeling? What, what mm. makes you different? Great question. Great question. So the way that I would distinguish the way that I work from, say, a, uh, a therapist who specializes in, in sexual issues or a counselor is I use touch. I use physical contact with the body, um, whereas a therapist will be very, very you know, purely talk based, there will not be any kind of physical interaction. Mm -hmm. And I think that talking about, um, uh, about anything to do with sexuality is really important. Uh, it's so important to be able to, to kind of pick those knots apart in, mm. in terms of what we've been fed mm. um, uh, about our beliefs and stuff. Um, but in, in my experience, if it comes, when it comes down to kind of really having an embodied sense of safety and um, not just a, a kind of theoretical understanding, you know, I can tell you till you're blue, till I'm blue in the face, like it's okay to, to um, enjoy touching yourself. It's okay to enjoy touching yourself. But if you only kind of register that on a mental level on a on an uh, on the idea level mm -hmm. and there's still kind of physical or emotional tension in your body mm. when you touch yourself then like there's not there's not a kind of cohesive um shifting of the belief does okay. does that does that make sense yeah. yeah 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 so so the way that i work is about using touch to bring people's awareness to what is happening in their body in that moment to then either just sit there and, and kind of be with it like yeah actually I feel really sad yeah. in this this moment and I don't normally let myself feel sad so okay let's just let's just be there with that yeah. or like okay yeah wow I really like tense my shoulder up when it when I'm thinking about intimacy or okay so let's just see if we can let that go a little bit and teach your body to undo the negative patterns that it's picked up around these these kind of unnourishing beliefs mm. about sex and intimacy and i think it must be even more profound for people who have had and you know this is perhaps the wrong phrase but an unnormal sexual experience you know if you've been through abuse or rape or trauma then like you say to sit and talk about it for hours on end there is only so much you're going to get from that because ultimately unless you can experience touch and and that intimacy in a safe environment mm. how how do you begin to heal and maybe you find of course partners and people that can take you through that that journey safely mm -hmm. but by coming to someone like yourself who's a professional and understands what they've been through and is there to help them heal mm -hmm. you're going to get profound changes within people and, and how they connect with themselves mm. yeah yeah certainly and it's your your spot on it's the it's the dynamic of um I'm not, you know, as much as I do feel for my clients and um, and I and I am very em empathetic with them and, and loving towards them and present with them, I am not emotionally invested in their experience. Mm, mm. So I don't need or want anything from them in return. And that's that's where even if you have the most supportive loving relationship with your intimate partner yeah. there there are the, the kind of romantic entanglements are, are do not create the kind of healthiest dynamic for you to work through or work with your your yeah like your own mm. wounds yeah. so um that's that's why we have professionals for anything right that's why we have sure. business coaches that's why we have personal trainers it's um we need someone who is emotionally slightly removed from mm. from uh, from the situation to yeah. 
uh, to actually kind of hold the space for, for, for something to, to happen. Yeah. And so, I mean, talking to you about this and for people listening, I think most of us would be able to appreciate why people who have suffered abuse or trauma in some regard need to have this specific approach potentially to to make Mm. positive change with their with their own bodies their intimacy their the happiness at the end of the day Mm. but for people who haven't been through that Mm. why would they come to you you know what are they what are they looking to achieve from it yeah it's it's a like I said I don't want it to all kind of sound really serious and like I'm so I'm not a therapist I want to just to just stress that I'm not a therapist I'm not a counsellor I'm a coach and a body worker um so really what I do is meet you wherever you are in in your relationship to your body to to intimacy to to sex and we kind of figure out well what's the situation right now and and where do you want to get to like how how do you want to expand your experience of of these things of pleasure of sensation of of intimacy whereas therapy is looking more at that that kind of history of of what's happened and what informs um how how you behave right now so um i i compare it to you know like i have a background as a personal trainer and some of my clients there were like in maintenance mode so you know they're 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 really active healthy people but they just love having a session a week where they have someone who gives them a program and kind of keeps them on track and maybe gives them a bit more motivation and um and it's uh, you know compare that to someone who who um is really at the beginning of their exercise journey and uh, has that kind of specific goal of maybe losing lots of weight or training for a marathon. You know, there's, there's something, there's a different motivation. And it's exactly the same with, with intimacy and, and, and touch. Um, I have uh, couples who come to me who um, like have a very, very healthy sex life. They're, you know, maybe, um, I don't know, they've, they've been together for varying lengths of time. But they, um, I'm thinking of like one one couple in particular that they um, they wanted, they knew that they had a really solid connection and they wanted to expand that. They felt they felt safe and secure with each other, so they wanted to kind of, you know, just go a little bit beyond that experience, having someone else um, in the space in an intimate situation. So mm-hmm. when I work with couples. I'll, I'll demonstrate intimate massage, genital massage, and then they like they kind of um, learn from what I'm doing and they learn how to give each other um, intimate massage. Okay. So for them, you know, it wasn't about, it's not about healing something or fixing a problem mm. or addressing an issue. It's just like, we really love each other and we love touching each other and our sex life is great like how can we learn more how Mm. can we enjoy more how can we worship and take care of each other and love each other and care for each other more and like oh there's a little bit of edginess in in maybe going um to to see a, a body worker with that and that's you know gives some excitement to the relationship as well so um and the same for the same for individuals, you know, I've, yeah. um, in the in the past year, there's certainly been an increase in the number of people who have sort of said to me, well, like, you know, it's kind of my intimate life with myself has been all right. But now I'm really like, wow, I could I could learn a new thing or two. Like maybe yeah. I've got into a bit of a routine with the yeah. way that I pleasure myself or touch myself and hmm, I've got some time on my hands I could uh, I could give myself a nice gift and uh, and and uh, and learn something new so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. fantastic so you know that I'm not a prude and you know that I'm very <laughs> liberal you know that I um love what you do and think it's incredible and I think you're mm. doing a fabulous work but but for people that are listening that potentially aren't as liberal as I am and mm. thinking well you know h- how do you vet your clients and and not be in essence what they might consider you know 
a prostitute or, mm. or you know that paying you to I mean are you having sex with people I'm, I'm asking you personal questions now about yeah. your work but so feel free to stop me correct me but I'm thinking from a prudish perspective mm. looking in you know how do you know who to work with yeah and again it comes back to these very um confusing or or kind of um controversial messages we've had about what sex and intimacy is and that if someone works in this field then they are a prostitute and that's it's very black and white you know there's nothing there's nothing else I mean I think even the idea of like a sex therapist someone who just talks about um, sexual issues was was quite radical you know radical um, yeah. uh, maybe until a decade ago so yeah what I do is it is new and evolving a new and evolving field in in terms of working somatically so working with the mind and working with the body incorporating touch um, I am very, very clear on my website um, about uh, the the fact that all of my sessions are one way touch only. They're not a they're not a sexual service. There's no reciprocal touch. There's no um, uh, th 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 there's no sexual act um, in in that sense. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy to re to recommend people uh, who work more with sexual surrogacy, which is again a, a, another area of, of of this stuff where there is more mutual um, connection, but it's more within a therapeutic um, container. Yeah. Um, so I am I'm qualified. I'm insured. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can get insurance for this stuff if you have the, the, the kind of right um, qualifications. So I'm trained in something um, called somatic sex education, okay. uh, which, um, uh, yeah, it, it's basically um, we, we have a very kind of strict um, code of ethics and, and hygiene protocols. And, um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm part of a, a membership body. And, you know, there's this is legitimate stuff, but I... Yeah. Um, I appreciate that for a lot of people, like you say, there is maybe this, uh, well, this own, only kind of one idea of what mm. um, what sexual work might be or might involve. So, yeah. yeah, I think that just comes from, again, lack of education, lack of understanding and a lack of dialogue that mm. we have with our children, with society, with the national mm. curriculum, you know, the children will learn the square root of pi before they learn what their anatomy does. I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah. I just, I, I wonder mm. sometimes, you know, what are we teaching our children? Um, because the square root yeah. of pi is potentially not going to help with that much not, later on. Yeah, you might not need that later. <laughs> but I think the other, the other thing that, that's relevant is, like I said, this is a new and evolving field. Yeah. And um, I, I like to think of myself as as mainstream as possible mm. um this this like my my qualification somatic sex ed education um was started by uh, a guy called joseph kramer in the 70s mm -hmm. so this kind of work has been around for longer than people might be aware of but it's um it was kind of confined to maybe california hippies and um, the, the the neo spiritual sort of world so there was I think our, definitely our dialogue around, around sexuality, around bodies, around intimacy has changed in the last 20 years. It's certainly changed in, you know, I'm 35 and it's, um, it's a radically different world um, uh, in terms of what's discussed and how it's discussed and yeah. what's on offer. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so if someone's listening to this, I mean, I think there's two areas that it might spark they might be interested in potentially vocationally exploring this world mm. or potentially exploring it as an individual with no intention to do it professionally but to want mm. to know more about it so where should people go to find obviously your website and your your instagram which i will share with everyone later but where do they go to find out about this this type of world that, that, that you're in so for for people who might be interested in it as a as a vocation um first of all there's um, the, the people that I trained with, the somatic sex education that, that I mentioned. Um, you, uh, I think, it, yeah, I think their, their website is literally just somaticsexeducation.co.uk. Uh, they run annual trainings um, and it's, it's a very experiential um, 
course so it's a lot about your own um, relationship with with this topic with intimacy with touch with self-pleasuring um, so that that's kind of a very important aspect of this work I would say to be to be very um, self-aware to actually address and work your work your stuff you sure. know it's you can't be uh, you can't be a you can't work with addicts or be, you know, someone who advises on alcohol addiction if you are still drinking every day yourself. Um, so it's the same with with touch and intimacy. If you're not OK um, and confident and open and non-judgmental and have cleared your shame and, and, and stuff around this, mm -hmm. then um, then then it's not going to be such a, a good service that you can offer to others. Yeah. So that that course, I would I would recommend to people mm -hmm. as a, a a good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, it's kind of it's dependent on on what type of person you are. Maybe you want to train in certain types of body work, so um, or, or more kind of energetic work like Reiki, for mm -hmm. for example. I know a lot of people who work in this field who come in from the more kind of energy work mm -hmm. uh, stuff like like, like Reiki. Um, but some kind of solid foundation in the body, in anatomy, in physiology. Um, sports massage is a good place to start because it is very practical, um, gives you a good map, a basic map and understanding of, of the human body. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, something if you if you want to be a bit more specialized, there's um, something called Lomi Lomi massage, which is a Hawaiian style of massage, which is very flowing very sensual uh, very loving has a, a deeply spiritual philosophy attached to it as well um, and then if you are yeah a little bit more kind of sexually curious perhaps and that's that's an angle that you want to 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 go into then um, exploring maybe some tantra workshops mm -hmm. or um uh, more kind of Taoist philosophy um, is is an interesting place to start. Okay, and do you? I mean, I a lot of people come to me in my company for training, and as you mentioned earlier, you you launched online training for people, which mm. people can access from around the world in the comfort of mm. their own home, which is which is so amazing. But do you keep training now? Do you still go on courses and workshops yourself? Are you constantly learning even now? Yeah, totally. I'm I'm one of those perpetual student type people, and um, I love. Um, I, I mean, I would say I do on average like one training a year, mm -hmm. um, uh, and then my for me it's the 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 foundation, the bedrock of my work is 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 being able to touch people, is it being able to give body work, being able to give massage. I learn from every single client that I work with you know everybody is unique and everyone's combination of of stuff and physicality and and and, and stuff is is different so I learn something new at every session that I give um my uh my online courses yeah they're more for lay people not necessarily for for people sure. wanting to qualify or, or be a body worker or be a therapist or coach um so they offer yeah for people who want to learn to give their romantic or intimate partners the gift of of sensual touch and to maybe feel a bit more confident about touching genitals um in particular um that's an area that you know no one tells you how to how to touch genitals like no one told me growing up so you just kind of guess but and and there's so much more that that you that that, that you could be doing um you, you know and we all get stuck in our routines in terms of how we touch our partners and we have the go-to sort of ways of doing things that we know will you know get mm -hmm. you to the goal but um yeah so so the the courses are more like a a, a, a lovely journey that you can go on together as a couple to learn um, more about um, intimate touch yeah. yeah yeah it's funny when when I was pregnant you know Ben would say to me my husband would say to me I, I wish I could be a woman to experience what you're experiencing <laughs> growing a baby and feeling him kick and you yeah. know 
having this moment that a man will never understand because mm. they cannot do it. And I, I think, you know, that made me think weirdly of that, you know, talking about genitals and 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 what to do with someone else's is why would you know because you don't mm. and then equally you might not know what to do with your own um so, exactly. yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> i think this, this, these courses that you do are, are should you know there's a fundamental part of life and you know everyone mm. who is stuck at home at the moment needs to be going and downloading them and and undertaking them but you know if you if you look back to your your career in this industry and without sharing anything that you wouldn't feel comfortable. Are there any unusual moments or any funny <laughs> moments that you can think about that sort of you look back and think, oh gosh? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I can't, I'm not gonna give, you know, um, too too much away in terms of like uh, client confidentiality, but it's, I mean, it's an unusual thing to do. My day-to-day -day work before COVID involved you know, touching naked bodies, touching and massaging um, genitals. And um, it's it just generally is an unusual thing to do. And, and now I kind of coach people in how to touch themselves intimately. There's a whole, sometimes I do, you know, zoom out like this is nobody. When I had my like careers advice talk, you know, at sick form, <laughs> and in no way was it like, hmm, yes, you would be excellent at making feel making people feel safe, making people feel relaxed, and you know, able to be as vulnerable with as they've ever been with anyone in their lives. Oh, and you know, touching intimate parts of their body. Just um, yeah, on the whole, it's generally unusual and sometimes I do pinch myself but it's um I think the un the unusual thing that maybe people wouldn't expect about this this sort of world is even though it's working with intimacy and touch and sexual energy the thing that surprises people the most is they lie down they get touched and they burst into tears and it's you know they they thought that they were coming for something pleasurable they thought that they were coming for something you know exciting and sexual and intimate and actually what you know the first layer that we that we go through is this grief this sadness this fear and all the kind of stuff that they've been holding on to and not expressed yeah. and then they're kind of like I, I don't I don't know why that happened like I, I'm like yes I well I know because you haven't expressed that stuff and we need to get it out of the way before you can you know dive into the pleasure and the joy and the and the, the orgasmicness mm. of, of your body so yeah it's it's not it's maybe not what people think um and intimacy is maybe not what we've been conditioned to think mm. um <laughs> it's always funny when people fart in a massage as well you know I've got a <laughs> Anyone who does this now in a session is going to feel is going to feel a bit odd about it, but I've I you know there's there's a thing that sort of happens as a, a as a body worker that it's like mm, that's okay it just tells me that your body is relaxing. So it's the the way to make people feel okay about farting, but yeah. that's that's the funniest it's thing. Natural. Really. Even the Queen does it. Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, you know, as you've been talking about earlier, you know, um, as we all know, COVID changed the world. You're you're in Stockholm. You know, you're, you're normally based in London and, and visit Stockholm for, for work. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what did you put in place? I know we've talked about your, your training courses for people mm -hmm. who want to explore that and, and can do that now. But I mean, I've missed just hugging people, you know, yeah. I, I miss hugging my mum and dad. I yeah. let alone everything else that we've been shut down by and as you said even more that extra layer of fear of you know you're going to bring covid into your household and everyone's going to die you know mm. how have you adjusted and how have you coped doing this it's i mean i had a, a massive panic at the at the beginning of this this whole thing i really you know being someone who works in the field of touch in a global pandemic that is telling you touch is dangerous. 
had a, a very, very low and anxious start to the, the whole experience. Um, as I know a lot of people in massage, in, um, you know, even like osteopathy, chiropractors, mm -hmm. any, anyone who relies on being one-to-one -one and physically connected with with a client well, even the whole beauty of, industry doing some hair industry, hairdressing yeah. any, anything. Any, anything like it's, doing. <laughs> how how do you how do you transfer that to a kind of virtual world um i was very fortunate that my i had done all the filming for my courses maybe i'd had some kind of premonition i don't know but i'd done it at the end of I kind of fin finished filming in December before um, the, the pandemic hit. So everything was kind of ready to go. And I knew that this online platform was, was something that I wanted to, to offer anyway. Um, not everyone is ready to come to um, an intimacy coach and, and be naked and be vulnerable and be touched, you know? So there was, there was an awareness of this is something, this is a channel that I can, offer this content to to people um in, in a different way um so that that was that was good but the very kind of beginning was yeah very anxious and very distressing and uh, on a personal level um yeah I, my partner is Swedish and he lives here in Stockholm so that's why I'm here so I'm very grateful that I can be with him and and be be hugged and um but I'm very very far away from from my family and, yeah. and uh, my sister and yeah, I feel you in that. Um, but there, it's been it, it's been an exciting opportunity as well to 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 kind of to shift a little bit how how I work, mm. learn some new skills. Mm. So the way I'm working with people now is is virtual coaching and mm. this kind of. Um, having to to sort of communicate well how can you touch yourself how can you enhance your experience of intimacy with yourself mm. in this current climate mm. you know it's and it's an amazing opportunity for a lot of people as well I mean the most sustained and intimate relationship that you are ever going to have in your life is is with yourself so this is like, you know, a massive honeymoon period for people in a way to really learn about them, their, their bodies and learn about themselves and mm -hmm. what feels good and, you know, how to self-soothe, how to um, connect with yourself in a mindful way, how to give yourself a nourishing hug, mm -hmm. um, how to massage your own body in a way that's kind of loving and effective. And so I think there's it's very easy to focus on the the negative side of having touch removed mm. but it but it's also like oh okay well now I now I realize that I actually need to learn to touch myself and 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 um love my own body you know maybe that's been something that's been neglected for for people and on a personal level you know is there anything you changed to help with because of course a lot of people suffered with mental health and financial difficulties as as you would have experienced mm. financially you know with your business stopping grounding to a halt initially you know mm. were there things you put in place on a personal level to help you through the period and still through it now mm, yeah exercise like the, to keep my body moving to have um so i'm a big fan of crossfit of yoga of i, I take a walk you know as as it's been snowing for literally 10 days straight here it's freezing but I you know I, I get out and I have a walk a good fast walk every day um unless it's really blizzarding um but yeah in the in those first two very difficult weeks like it was it was vitally important to me to move and to make that a, a priority and to dance I do something called five rhythms which is um, a style of dance which is basically movement meditation so there's no steps that you have to learn or anything that you have to, to follow rigidly you just put music on and kind of let your body move and have a good dance um, that that's very very helpful anything really that that gives you some kind of dopamine hit anything yeah. that gives you that that sense of maybe elevating your heart rate, um, 
having something that gets your limbs moving gets your 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 pulse going that's been really important to me yeah Yeah, no absolutely I mean I I love talking to you about this and I find it such a fascinating subject and as clearly probably all our listeners can tell I I I believe in it I think that there Mm. should be more dialogue I think there should be more people doing what you're doing but before Mm. I and I could talk to you about this all day but before (laughs) I ask you my final question I am Mm. going to surprise you with a quick fire round question quiz (laughs) (laughs) now the way this works is I am going to say two words and tell me the word you're most drawn to you can give me a reason why if you'd like to explain you don't have to if you don't Mm -hmm. want to but try not Mm -hmm. to think about it too much so for example I might Mm -hmm. say cats or dogs and you would say cats okay right let's go morning or night morning Vacation or staycation? Vacation. Netflix or party? Depends what kind of party it is. <laughs> <laughs> Both. 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 <laughs> Fish or chips? Fish. Betty Martin or Wim Hof? Betty Martin, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of my teachers. I love her. <laughs> Rain or sun? Sun. All the time, please. <laughs> Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie? Oh, tough one. They're both, I think they're both very charismatic, very wonderful people. Well, their public persona is anyway. Both of them, both. Violin or cello? Cello. I play the cello. The... <laughs> thought that would be your answer sea or swimming pool mm, I'm a bit afraid of the sea so swimming pool yeah I like going under the sea I love um scuba diving I know you love that too um so but not on the sea just under it fast or slow depends depends what you're doing if you're touching slow is always always the best place to start the slower you move when you touch the more you feel okay sweet or savory sweet (laughs) but don't tell (laughs) (laughs) all right the listeners might eggs or bacon eggs i think eggs are amazing they're my one of my favorite foods yeah britney or madonna (laughs) Neither really. Uh, Gold or silver? Silver. I wear mostly silver. Today or tomorrow? Today. Nice. Be present. Be here. Be in the moment. So Libby, looking back at your career, looking back at, you know, the last year, where you are now, your success, your continued development in this profoundly amazing and exciting world that you work within what do you believe it takes to succeed in life what is the what is the journey of life all about the first the first kind of thing that just really comes into my head is compassion like compassion for yourself compassion for others um, to lead a compassionate life um and that doesn't mean being a pushover um being compassionate means kind of standing up for what you need and what you believe in um uh, putting your foot forward uh, when you need to but also just appreciating that everyone is everyone is struggling and everyone has their their stuff going on and you know being being compassionate and loving and kind um, in, in, in that knowledge and writing a list writing a to-do list always helps me <laughs> I think just to get yourself get yourself clear on, on what you would like to um, achieve or explore in that day mm. um, that week that month having doesn't have to be a rigid plan um, you don't have to stick to it, but just to, to, to write a list, write things down. Um, and, you know, 
maybe if you come back to that list in five years, 30% of it will be a, will have been achieved and, and, you know, the rest will be forgotten and irrelevant, but at least it was, it was there. I like that. I like that. Mm. Passion and writer list. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, thank you so much for today. I, I hope that our listeners have found this really interesting as much as I find this fascinating. Um, so for everyone who wants to now go and, and find Libby online um, and, and, you know, do her courses, which are incredible, um, mm. you can firstly find her website, which is touchofhappiness.co.uk. She is, of course, on Instagram and you can find her touch of happiness massage. So you can follow her and obviously send her DMs directly. And then also her YouTube channel, which is touch of happiness massage. So, you know, go and look at her courses. If you're still in lockdown when you listen to this, what better time than to do a course mm. about learning about your body and, you know, open your mind to new possibilities. And, mm. you know, the future is yours. But Libby, thank you so much for coming to speak with me. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank for your you, time. darling. Thank you.